Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is me, Vivs from Slidner here. In this video, let's finish our discussion of the navigation drawer by merging the final pieces together. That is how the action bar interacts with our navigation drawer to complete our app. So far, I've been talking about the navigation drawer. I showed you guys why do you need it, what do you do with it, and how you can implement it here. Let's finish this. So the first thing that you need to remember is whenever the user opens your drawer, or closes the drawer there is an event called on drawer opened or on drawer closed that is based on your drawer listener which is the actual interface that deals with these events out there now it has methods as I just mentioned on drawer open and on drawer closed where you can write code to do certain actions when the drawer is opened or closed now you don't have to directly implement this interface there is a class called action bar drawer toggle that already implements this interface in other words create an object of this class and you're good to go so let's take a look at why do we need this well you see when you select an item from the navigation drawer like I showed you in the previous videos you gotta make sure that the title here the where it is written top view one must change appropriately to indicate the name of the item that was selected at the same time when the user starts the app for the first time user needs to be aware of some indication here in this left hand corner at the top indicating that there is a navigation drawer in the app and that is actually shown by these three horizontal bars that you see here so all this behavior is actually controlled by your action bar drawer toggle now at the same time when your app changes its configuration like for example say you change the orientation of your device from landscape to portrait the navigation drawer also needs to change appropriately based on the screen size and therefore even that event has to be handled by your navigation drawer now one of the most important things is the sync state now what the user sees on the screen and what is actually maintained by the drawer layout object as state may not be the same once the user has exited the activity let me explain what I mean so let's say you started an activity you ran out of the activity so on save instance state is called the drawer is in a closed state the drawer layout object has to make keep the same state as what the user sees on the screen and that can be done with the help of the sync state method over here and therefore you're supposed to call this method from on post create inside your activity which is actually a special lifecycle method that is called after on create and after on restore instant state I'll be showing you this in code now obviously the next thing to do is to modify the contents of the action bar when the drawer is visible like changing the title removing the contextual action items now when you talk about contextual what do you mean is if you open the file manager on your phone if you select a file and hold on it I mean click hold on it for some time what you will see is certain options like cut, copy, paste that emerge at the top of your screen in the action bar. Now, when you open the navigation drawer, you want to hide those contextual actions temporarily till the navigation bar drawer is open. And therefore, you gotta make sure that the content of the action bar are modified as such. So, what does the action bar drawer toggle object require? let's take a look at the following things that it needs it first needs the object of the activity that contains the drawer then it needs a drawer layout reference so that it can work with it then it needs a drawable resource that is the three horizontal bars which I just showed you in the image in the previous slide then it needs the icon out there and ultimately a string resource to describe the opening and closing action that you need now you guys are probably wondering why should you need a string resource now this is for people who are disabled in some way like for example if they can't see the screen there's probably a voice assistant which will tell them that the drawer was opened or the drawer was closed indicating that where they were on the current app this is purely for accessibility purposes and we'll be talking about accessibility in our upcoming videos on slide Nerd. so let's go to Eclipse and code this baby up so at this point if you guys notice this is our navigation drawer that has been popped up as you notice the user who's coming to your app for the first time has no idea that there's actually a navigation drawer in your app so let's make things better for the user so there's our action bar drawer toggle which is basically your listener that's gonna tell us when the drawer was opened or closed now we need to initialize an object of this drawer listener 
So let's go right here below the list view here below the drawer layout and let's create this object by saying drawer listener equals to new action bar drawer toggle. Now this is going to require certain parameters. What are those going to be? The first parameter it requires is the activity where the navigation drawer is present. We can simply write this over here for that. Second parameter is a drawer layout object. Fair, pretty simple. The third parameter is an image containing three horizontal bars. Now I have already placed the appropriate images for my app here. If you go to my X HDPI, there's IC underscore drawer your PNG. If you open that image, this is that image with the three horizontal bars over here. So that's the image which I'm gonna link to by saying R dot drawable dot IC underscore drawer over here. Now the next thing it requires is a string that indicates the text about opening the drawer and a string that indicates the text about closing the drawer. Now you're obviously wondering why you need a string. Now this is required purely for accessibility purposes. In other words, if the user is blind and cannot see the screen and if he's using some screen assistant, that will tell the user whether the navigation drawer was opened or closed. So I have a string here inside my strings.xml the drawer underscore open which says open navigation drawer drawer underscore close which says close navigation drawer so I'll go back to the main activity here and I will simply link those two strings by saying r dot string dot open so at this point things look pretty good but I don't want to just create an object I want to overwrite certain methods that belong to this class so I'm gonna have a parenthesis over here it's gonna make this an inner class here and then I'm going to overwrite the method which says on drawer opened and on drawer closed. Now those are the two things I'm interested in. So place them here. Just press Control Shift F to format stuff. And most importantly, don't forget this statement which says drawer layout dot set drawer listener. Now you need to tell the drawer layout that this is the listener object who is going to receive the events over here. So inside the on drawer open, let me make a toast and show you guys what happens here. <clears throat> so if you see here inside my on drawer close I have a toast that says drawer close and inside the on drawer open I have another toast indicating the same message. So let's run this at this point and see what Now things start out pretty normal they look exactly the same as they did but now if you open the drawer there's a toast message that says drawer open and if you slide back the drawer and close the drawer there's another toast that pops up indicating the drawer was closed. In other words these two methods are getting called and you get to decide what to do when the drawer is opened or closed. Now let's do certain things to make this look better. First thing that we want to do is get our support action bar by saying get support action bar dot set home button enabled. Now this home button that we have in our app can be enabled and that's exactly what this method does. Let's let me show another thing here. Now let me actually run this and show you what happens at this point. If you go here run at the top well you notice nothing has happened and you guys are probably saying hey what did you do with this method now if you if you actually click on this place notice how that area gets highlighted over here if I click and hold it here at the top you see that blue color highlighting over here at the top that's exactly what happens when I click on the home button because I enabled it here by setting the boolean makes this entire area clickable over here the next thing that I want to do is say get support action bar dot set display home as up enabled now this is going to allow a special type of affordance or you can say a navigation called up in addition to the back that we already have now let me run this and show you what i mean by that now if you see the app there's a little arrow over here that you guys can notice what this arrow indicates is that if i'm at some other screen inside my app by clicking over here at the top i can go back to the home screen of my app that is what this navigation is all about so again if you open the drawer from the left to right it's a drawer open getting triggered and you click on something nothing happens just a toast message that pops up and you can close the drawer by closing it so nothing great so far well let's keep going and figure out how to make this thing work so now the next thing that we need to do is synchronize the state of the drawer layout object with what the user sees on the screen now how do we do that very simple there is this method called on post create which is actually called after the activity startup is complete that is after on start and on restore instance state have been called now usually you don't use this method in the life cycle of the activity but then here in this case once the activity state has been restored what we want to do is say drawer listener dot sync state now this lets what the user see the drawer in the perfect way on the screen now let me demonstrate the difference to you guys and so that you guys can see what is going on exactly 
So for the first time ever, you guys will notice the three horizontal bars that are popping up here. Now when you expand the drawer, those bars minimize. You notice that carefully and you, when you remove the drawer or close the drawer again, the draw, the th three horizontal bars maximize and that's exactly what the sync state is all about. It in other words indicates to the user that there is a navigation drawer out there and that is the way the user sees it. So this is one of the things that you need to handle. And the next thing that we need to handle is to actually make the drawer appear when you click. Let me show you what I mean. So right now if you click on the home icon here at the top right here, nothing happens. The drawer should actually pop up when you click over here. And that's our goal. Let's make that happen. So what we want to do is when the drawer is opened. So for that, the first thing that you do is override the on options item selected, which is this method that we have here. This method takes care of handling your item click in your menu. By default, it doesn't work with the navigation drawer. What you want to do is first forward this event to the navigation drawer by saying if drawer listener dot on options item selected, then return true now return true means this event was successfully handled over here in this if condition by your navigation drawer that is by the drawer listener object to be more precise otherwise you call the super class implementation of on options items selected so remember whenever an item is clicked on your action bar the first thing that's gonna do is this method is gonna call get called and there the first thing that you're gonna do is forward that to your drawer navigation drawer so let's go ahead and run so right now there is our navigation drawer now the best part is if you click here at the top what's gonna happen is the navigation drawer is gonna pop up again if you click on that over here at the top it's gonna close the navigation drawer and that's the reason is because on options item selected is called when the moment you click somewhere here at the top and as soon as you click here what you are doing is simply forwarding that click event to the drawer listener object which is gonna take care of popping the drawer open for you guys so that is one little step towards making our drawer complete the next thing that we wanna do is handle configuration changes by saying on configuration changed again here we wanna simply pass our drawer listeners configuration by saying drawer listener dot on configuration change to indicate the new configuration to our drawer listener object so that it can appropriately change the navigation drawer whenever say the screen size changes or something like that or orientation changes so this pretty much completes our navigation drawers setup. We have almost gone through all the points out there. There are some minor things that still need to be fixed. But before that, we are going to start talking about custom lists inside navigation drawers. Because right now when you open this here, from the left of your screen, what you see is a simple list view. How do you bring those fancy icons and other crazy stuff that people do inside their navigation drawer and the other standard apps that you see on Google Play all the time. So we're going to talk about those in the next video and hopefully we'll also fix up the little issues like setting the title perfectly and handling contextual actions when the navigation drawer opens in the upcoming videos. In the meantime, if you guys do like what you saw, Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.